when you step on the line and you come here to report, we see you as a practitioner. So I need you to triple check everything that you do. So your integrity as a journalist counts on your ability to tell the truth and your ability to be the one that breaks the news. So let's say you are doing your, you are looking for an opportunity to do in-service training. Yeah. Just walk up into anyone who is running a company that does what you have studied and say, comrade, I am hungry. I need to work. Show me what you need me to do and I will do it twice as much. And when they give you that opportunity to volunteer, hold it with both hands, you have just started writing a CV. You, are, you have basically started customizing your CV. I could negotiate well even when it comes to the salary package, not from desperation. Because if you are negotiating for your salary package, but you cannot afford to walk away from the negotiations, then you, you are not negotiating, you are just desperate. You are only negotiating the moment when if you don't like the package, you can just walk. Mm -hmm. If you have that option to walk, then you are negotiating. The Groundbreakers, Mondays to Thursdays, Mondays to Thursdays, 7 to 9 p.m. on TUT FM. FM. It is uh, that time once again on a Wednesday uh, to get into more important conversations. And uh, as we usually do, we bring more seasoned guests and now i i do have a uh, one guest i'll tell you about that guest there in a moment but today we are talking how to stay relevant and of course if you are into content creation if you are into the media space and if you want to know from somebody who has started off at such times uh, went on into that space and he has been there for some times uh, the man on the line uh, to us uh, is the relevant man. And his name is uh, Mwendli Soko. Well, he's, of course, um, part of the genial route. And they track back to 2017 when they started as a Soweto Observer, a trusted local newspaper. Now, their dedication to quality and integrity quickly earned them the trust of advertisers who were impressed by their work ethic and began requesting additional services, recognizing their demand uh, for printing solutions. Uh, they expanded their offerings to include uh, business cards and uh, invoice books, opening a new division dedicated to these services. Now, this diversification marked the beginning of their transformation, and as the digital landscape evolved and people increasingly spent more time on their phones and computers, they saw an opportunity to further expand their services. Now, the positive reception from their clients was overwhelming, prompting them to invest in extensive training uh, for the entire team. They embraced the digital age, ensuring that digital marketing became an integral part of their service offering. Fast forward uh, to this year, Guinea has uh, fully transitioned into a digital agency, facing out uh, publications to focus entirely on their digital and print services. Uh, their evolution reflects uh, their commitment to staying ahead of uh, industry trends and continually meeting the client's uh, demands. Now, through the Guinea, uh, Mondly has worked with countless clients offering top-notch web development, graphic design, and print solution. His leadership has fostered a workplace culture where employees are eager to contribute and grow. The Guinea's commitment to innovation and client satisfaction was solidified has solidified rather its reputation as a leading as a leading a digital agency. Well, Mondly Robert Soko's dedication to excellence, continuous learning, and unwavering passion for media and digital solution has propelled the genial to international acclaim. Now, his vision and leadership continue to drive the agency forward, setting new standards in the industry. I think we have a very interesting conversation that's coming up, especially within the context of uh, a print media that is continuing to, if you like, evaporate for a lack of better word we see more print media uh, and newspapers are continuing to be phased out and people are moving into the digital space what does that mean uh for 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 journalism and printing and media proper on the line to us for a far more broader conversation even the topic itself will tell you it's going to be a far more broader conversation if you are joining us uh, please engage with us on uh, 012 
0614-382-9257. This discussion is far more important for those who want to venture into this particular space. And Monty Soko is the founder and managing director of uh, the Guinea Media Intelligence. He's also a media strategist on the line to us now. Monty, thank you so much. I'm looking forward to a very enlightening conversation. Good evening. Good evening, Kuti and the listeners. How are you doing this evening? Now, we certainly can't complain, except we're looking forward to picking your brain and understanding the industry a lot more better. I think our start would, would be would be best placed at uh, where you've started yourself. You've been with such times. You are also a TUT alumni. Talk to us about your passion and where your passion for content creation and media start. Uh, well, uh, my journey started... started um, from TUTFM before such times. Um, yes, I started at TUTFM. We were doing Live at Six at the time with Matera. I was a reporter at Live at Six. Oh, yes. And yes, and um, I remember I was only first year when when that happened. And uh, Matera, Kidiboni uh, Mahapa, uh, yes. we sat down on the round table and they said to me, listen here, young man. Uh, before anything happened in social movie, we want to know about it. Mm -hmm. Before it even happens, we need you to know about it. Whatever yeah. happens, we need you to be there on the ground and get us the job done. Can you do that? And I was so hungry for, for work. And I just told them that just give the word and I will get it done. And moving right along, I was getting comfortable with, with with, with radio, with broadcasting, until one of my lecturers said, you know what, uh, you are brilliant on radio, you are doing well, but it wouldn't hurt you to take a camera with when you go to the field yes. and take some pictures and probably write something that's gonna go on print, which is such times. Mm -hmm. And it looked like a good idea for a young journalist who want to get his name out there. And that is exactly what I did. And when I got to such times, they 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 were not training a student they they didn't go easy on me okay. and yeah no, they did they didn't about tapelo they didn't go easy on me that like they just made it clear to say when you step on the line and you come here to report we see you as a practitioner so i need you to triple check everything that you do so yeah. your integrity as a journalist counts on your ability to tell the truth and your ability to be the one that breaks the news first, of, of which it was nothing I haven't heard before. I'm from TUT, journalism yes. department. That is where legends are bred. Sure. Um, in, in the world, especially as far as broadcasting is concerned, we, I think the TUT department create monsters that I've never seen because most of the machines that you are going to find even on, on SABC, wherever they are from TUT. So, I think I was in the right space, so I just went all out and I tried my best to do whatever that it takes for the job to get done. And um, this very slot at the time, it was called TUT Network. Yeah. This is where I got my first media award. Um, mm -hmm. The listeners of this very show actually voted me the best talk show presenter of the year 2013. Oh. It still feels like yesterday sure. to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it still sure. feels yesterday to me so yeah my journey started here it looks like uh, a well-traveled journey you've started off of course with TUTFM you've tasted broadcasting on air you've also gone down to print as well how would you say those experiences have shaped you for the man you've become now and the understanding you have broadly in the industry uh, I can just say to you it's pressure this this environment just taught me how to learn to be comfortable with pressure learn to be comfortable with being uncomfortable and learn to breathe when it comes to no matter how much pressure you have you should be able to breathe in the presence of the most excessive pressure mm -hmm. and and actually deliver because um oski diboni didn't really care to say you have exams or you have assignments <laughs> oh, oh well she, she she just didn't want to be in, in that part of of my world what she wanted was stories on air mm -hmm. and i was changed by the listeners as well of tutfm sure. i remember one time i was 
buying something in one of the shops in Mabopane and a lady said to me, that voice, I know it. Are you monthly? And I said, yes. She said, we listen to you and your work is improving. Mm. Uh, it was actually very embarrassing for me to hear it from a listener saying, when you started, you were horrible. Yeah. You were horrible when you started and we have seen you grow. <laughs> and now we look forward to hearing from you. So yeah, it was it was a bit weird, but it was quite a humbling experience as well. And I had to listen to what they want to hear yeah. as well. So yeah, I think... It gave you enough equipment though and enough artillery though to even think of uh, starting your own. You are a founder and managing director of a Guinea Media intelligence tell us a bit more about when how that started and when it was established i registered the genial on my graduation day um i think it was september 15 2015 if i'm not mistaken yeah but it wasn't it wasn't operational it was just a registered company that was not operational it was just in my heart to open it i didn't even know why i will need it because i had a full-time job at the time yeah uh, one of the things that I will raise to, to TUTFM listeners just before I proceed is the rivalry between Pretoria and Joburg. If you are from Pretoria and Joburg, you will feel that you will feel the thing that I don't know why in Joburg they are afraid of Pretorians in a way, mm -hmm. but they are so afraid of Pretorians in a way that they close channels for them because I, I, I think I think they could also see it in my eyes and they could feel it to say this guy one little chance is going to get things done. Mm -hmm. So I just registered the company. I was not doing anything with it. I was actually having a, a full-time job at News Clip Media Monitoring, which I thought I knew pressure, but that kind of pressure was madness, but it actually grew and molded me uh, mm -hmm. to, to becoming very strong. So that is how the company came by. And it started as a newspaper, of course, like you've already alluded to the listeners, uh, back in 2017, when I now wanted to get operational with, with the company, because this is another part that I want to raise with um, the graduates that are listening as to how did I transition from just being a normal employee, moving into being a business owner, and yeah. what, what gave me the guts to say, I can start my own thing, and can I really run it efficiently? So it was quite a trigger for me. And then, yeah, th I think that is just how it started. So, so you said there was no, even at that particular time, you didn't actually know why you've, you've started that. But I'm sure with time, uh, the, the, the purpose started to build. What, what direction then along the way did you, did you think you would like to take with the company you have established? In seeing the niche in the market, what did you identify to say, this is the opportunity I can use then along the way? Okay, I sat down. Um, I was I was staying in Soweto at the time, and it was just a young man who doesn't have a job. There was only one newspaper that wanted to hire me, but I was not happy with with the salary, so I didn't really accept the offer. So it was just a young man sitting down who was actually struggling, and I said to myself, "Look, uh, I have seen this." Uh, I've seen this movie before. I have worked on the other side of the news delivery part of it. And when I was working for News Clip Media Monitoring, I saw the inside part of, of the business as to when you're saying you're running a media business, exactly what is it? Where does the money come from? Yeah. Where does the money come from? How is it supposed to be ran? And what happens? So since I already knew the ins and runnings of the business part of it, and I already knew how to generate the news and the stories, and I knew how to edit, so I just needed to find two other monthlies, and then I could just sit and be the editor because I already knew yeah. the game. I had been there, done that, and I just went in and do it. So I spotted the opportunity because I already knew how the game goes. So I just went for it. And when I went for it, the response was good. So I just decided to stay in the game. 
You know what, Mandy? Let's take a quick break. Remember, we are talking at a later stage. We're still trying to understand you a bit more and the journey you've traveled. Perhaps there's a lot to learn from that, uh, given uh, your extended history and experience in the field. But when we come back from this, uh, we'll talk to people about how to stay relevant in an industry that is uh, proving to be changing uh, quite often. Let's take a break. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back uh, from uh, a quick break in conversation with us uh, is Mondi Soko. Uh, we are talking how to stay relevant in a media space. But, but before we get to that, you've been in the journey yourself. You know the challenges that beset uh, students. You know the challenges that beset would be and prospective journalist. Now that you do have the company and, and, and being in the pound seat, that I'm using that very loosely, what opportunities are you creating then for young people who might be in the same predicament as you would have been in? All right. So I take in students now and again, uh, but I won't lie to you. Students are a nightmare to work with. <laughs> okay, let me just say it now. <laughs> okay. Uh, they are a nightmare to work with. Um, some of them are not industry hungry. Mm -hmm. They have just gone to school because they said go to school, you know. So they don't have that thing of being a sponge, of, of being willing to learn. Sure. One of the things uh, Kidivoni said to me when I was there, I think that has shaped my career was, um, if you don't learn, then there is no point to trying to feeding you. So when we open opportunities for students, sometimes students don't take opportunities seriously, but I do have quite a few students that I am happy to point out and say, this one came out of my hand, this one came out of my hand. Yeah. And some of them are not exactly in journalism. Some of them are in the space of web development and coding because it goes hand in hand with media. So that is, so we do have people that we have developed. I still take in students from time to time. I think probably I will communicate. Probably yeah. as we almost closing the year, I will still come back to this show and ask for a couple of journalism students, maybe, and, and put them to work and see if they can actually deliver um, what is needed. Because sometimes we do not need people who are perfect. We just want people who are willing to listen. Uh -huh. We just need people who are willing to listen and actually learn. So that is one of the things um, that I've seen with students. But we do try to create opportunities there and there because there are certain things that I wish someone could have told me about the industry sooner sure, that I sure. didn't, that I didn't understand. For example, mm -hmm. I had a YouTube channel by 2013 because the lecturers at TUT taught us about the importance of YouTube and whatnot. And we never took it seriously yeah. until one of my own students that I have taught is now earning over a hundred thousand on YouTube. And then that is when I realized, whoa, YouTube is really is something now. Then now that's the time where me myself also I'm now heading off to YouTube. But should I have made the move earlier, I think I would even be richer. I would I would even be more comfortable. Probably then. All right, yes. he's now back on the line. Yeah, you are now back. I lost you uh, momentarily there uh, on the line to us, uh, Monty. But 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 again, it's important to mention why would you have uh, a view, such a view about a specialist student? It can't just be a Joe Beck student. I think if somebody in Pretoria and anybody else listening, either in Bumalang or anywhere, should be able to see this as something that uh, stops them from getting those opportunities. Why would you make a view around people not taking opportunities seriously what what are you seeing to make you make that view okay you you have people who don't want to who don't come to work on time who are not innovative in terms of coming up mm -hmm. with their own ideas on yeah. on on how things should go or what they are comfortable with you know mm -hmm. i was not simply speaking when i worked at tutfm but when i showed up I at least could speak to my bosses and said, can I do investigative journalism? Can I be that annoying journalist that will mm -hmm. go and just mind for the truth, black or white is raining or not, I'm going to come back with those voice notes in the studio and they yeah. will be edited yeah. properly. Mm -hmm. So we do not have students that are hungry 
to learn. Mm. Even if they do come to work, sometimes they will be late. Sometimes they will come up with, you know, I've been an intern before and you can tell when someone yeah. is not being honest. So sometimes mm -hmm. we see a lot of these games being played by students. So that is basically we do not have people who who are hungry to work mm -hmm. and who are hungry to be innovative enough in terms of of trying hard enough. So that is what I've experienced around Jovec with with students around. Um, I have taken quite a few from TUT when I ran Soweto Observer, they've never disappointed me, probably because I knew the lecturers. So if you're giving me a problem, I know who to call to say, yeah, sure, is sure. giving me a problem. So they never yeah. really gave me problems that much, but I think that is part of, of the problems that we have. And also, uh, one thing that I have seen, people are waiting for a messiah, that is for graduates, not just journalism involved. I'm talking to the students who have done IT, I'm talking to, mm -hmm. The students who are in marketing i'm talking to your auditors and your accountants and all these people no one is yeah. coming to save you as a graduate no one wakes up in their uh, normal day in the morning and think about giving you a job as an as an as an as a graduate everyone is thinking profit 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 if i can have five robots doing what you are doing trust me i would rather go for the robot why because they don't go on leave um they do not uh, take me to CCMA. They, yeah, they, they the production just keep on coming. Yeah. So the point that I'm trying to drive through to graduates is no one is coming to save you, and no one cares that you are, you are a graduate. You have these things. The only time where I am going to hire you is if you can do something that I cannot do myself. Either I'm yeah. too busy or you are too skilled in doing it, and you have a proof record of, of of events that can prove to me that you have done this and that will force me to even think about trusting you with a b c d and d so imagine if you were to have a dog at your house but that you would have to bark on his behalf when bad guys come you are the one who has to stand up and bark <laughs> but them, yeah, basically that that is how employers look at it so it's just a question of why should i have snoopy here if i'm also here going to have to back when the criminals show, show up. So it's a question of, can you, can you show me the value before we go far? Can you show me a proven track record that you can do this? So let's say you are doing, your, you are looking for an opportunity to do in-service training. Yeah. Just walk up into anyone who is running a company that does what you have studied and say, comrade, I am hungry. I need to work. Show me what you need me to do and I will do it twice as much. And when they give you that opportunity to volunteer, hold it with both hands, you have just started writing a CV. You, are, you have basically started customizing your CV. Yeah, that is where yeah. employers will take you serious. But otherwise, uh, we are struggling in terms of South African workforce because also the labor laws as well, they are quite oppressing to, to businesses. They favor more of the employees. So sometimes, employees are a bit afraid of of mm. taking in students or creating more opportunities as well for it's an important point we close to the news and maybe just after the news we'll talk a bit more about uh, uh, how ai which is one of the points you've already raised how ai is likely to make bosses fire people because uh, they cannot go to the ccma and uh, they cannot protest either we'll, we'll get into that uh, uh, in, in a moment but it's eight o'clock now palolo madisa i see is uh, straining at the leash let's go to the news we are into the second uh, hour of uh, the show and now let's get back to Monty, who is uh, on the line to us uh, now, and we are asking how you stay relevant in this industry. Let's get down to that crux of the matter. I see uh, there are a number of questions that are coming in as well. Monty, you may have to brace yourself for that, but let's get straight into that, though. I mean, how do you not only become relevant, but stay relevant because these are two things once you become you have to stay there uh, it requires a different level of energy as well how do you not only become relevant but stay relevant all right um i will break it down on a a few pointers that one needs to actually be relevant yes. number one you need to be on top of the game in terms of knowing who is currently running the show and why are they running the show? Mm. 
-hmm. what makes them the choice for everyone for them to be able to run the show yes. and where are they headed to and what are the new things in that industry and those new things in the industry what does it take to attain and once you have attained those new things in the industry if you were to go for them how quickly would you get them mm -hmm. and if you get them how would you be able to sustain them yes and once you are able to sustain them how quickly can you be able to adapt in it and look forward in what is com upcoming next right. can i use the newspaper example for yes as an as an example to make my point mm -hmm. newspapers were the thing back in the day because everyone could buy a newspaper on their way to work on the train anyway it was the first thing that they had to 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 go through for them to be clued up about yes. what is going on but now what was funding the newspapers the newspapers were funded by these grocery stores papers that you could find in the middle mm. of the mm. newspaper yes. and uh, monthly uh, funerals that you could find there uh, you know uh, um, uh, modeling agency you know yeah. those yeah. things they pay man they paid money to be there why mm. because the newspapers were in people's eyes but as soon as people started being more on their phones, other than being on newspapers, the people who were paying money to have their advertisements there, they quickly took their money to the phone where the people are. So yes. the newspapers, they stayed, they died. They died because of that. And for those who couldn't jump ships early, they actually had to close, unfortunately so yeah. that is one of the things or the ones who couldn't transition to wake up and smell the coffee so let's say maybe you are a print journalist that yeah. was focused on print all the time yeah. and you didn't have anything to do with the online and the new digital dispensation so yeah. when the newspaper died you could have died with them unfortunately it's a sad reality that there are students who are um, who are a bit backwards in terms mm -hmm. of studying they they are after causes that will soon fade out in the industry because yeah. you may know a cousin who is already in the industry but you do not know the kind of changes that they are going through yeah. for example there is a hospital in pretoria i will not call it by name they yeah. already have robots conducting surgeries mm -hmm. a robot does not shake a hand when it when it conduct that surgery it's straightforward it's precise yeah. quicker mm -hmm. faster so if you are going in to be a surgeon and you do not understand artificial intelligence then that totally disqualifies you mm -hmm. even though you have learned it the mm -hmm. unions may try to fight for you but the unions cannot come in at my company and tell me what to do because i'm the one who knows where my company is going next so right. instead of hiring my normal five surgeons that I hire per year, maybe I will hire none and have artificial intelligence working under minimal human supervision and yeah. making sure the production is still going. So that is one of the things and young people need to be out there, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. You need to speak to people, you need to volunteer if it costs you to volunteer. Can I come do this for free? If you don't want me to do this, can I just be the, the person that you will be sending to do printouts? or what not yeah because you want to listen to what is being discussed in the office one day so and so will be absent and they will want someone who can do one two three you can say no i can do it i have seen it done a thousand times i read a story about mm -hmm. edenstein they said one day he was sick he was booked somewhere to go and speak so on his way mm -hmm. there the driver said no 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 you don't have to cancel this gig i will speak the driver is saying I've had yeah. you deliver this keynote a thousand times. He went there, that is the PA, he delivered the keynote because he has had it from him a thousand times. And mm -hmm. then after that, he was like, you know what? Because remember back in the day, they didn't even know who the Edenstein is. So he's yeah. like, you know what? If you have any questions, maybe my driver will just answer your questions for you referring to the actual Edenstein <laughs> to answer the questions. Yeah. But how did the driver gets to the point of being able to know and understand what that keynote was. He was surrounded by people who were high performing. 
he was surrounded by someone who is in his A game. So it won't help you to just sit focused doing nothing uh, when there are companies that are running. Sometimes you are what they need, but they do not have the budget for you. But right. if you can come in and impress, they will make the budget for you. Hmm. I, I, have, I have an employee that I hired two years ago. Um, I didn't really want to hire this girl. She, she just kept on annoying me. Like she just kept on coming. She just kept on coming until I got tired. And I was like, okay, Yazin, can you please write me a press release on one, two, three and one, two, three. She nailed it. <laughs> mm. She nailed it. She came back sooner than I thought. And she's like, yeah, I've done it. Is there anything else I can do for you? I'm like, hey, okay, look, I have a meeting whenever, please go with me. She was taking minutes instead of me asking questions. She was asking the most relevant question. I was mm -hmm. like, no, 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 no. I'm keeping this girl. I don't have a budget for her, but I made a budget for her. Mm -hmm. Why? Because she has showed me the value. So sometimes as, as an employer, I want you to show me value. I want you to show me what you can do. CVs, I can have 10,000 of them in the office very quickly. But what makes me pick you? Why should I choose you? over everyone else, what makes you outstanding. It's that experience that I'm talking about of mm -hmm. volunteering, learning who is who. Even if you, 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 you are a pharmacist, you, that is what you studied. You can go to the local pharmacist and say, can I volunteer? I will be here at eight o'clock first thing tomorrow morning. I will come in every day, do the dirty work, volunteer and learn the ropes as they move around you begin to know things that you didn't know. And trust me, sometimes when you are very good at what you do, they will make a provision that you stay because mm -hmm. they have seen the value. And for all of you graduates who are listening, no one is coming to save you. Some of you will have to work in industries that you did not study. Mm -hmm. I remember when we were arranging to watch this interview, you were asking me, about certain things. And I was telling you that I'm currently doing some negotiations with two P two parties. I'm the one who's leading the negotiations. I'm not a trained negotiator. I'm not a trained sure. salesperson, but it's what I have learned as I've been in the industry. Some of the graduates think that when they start taking sales jobs, they are poor or mm. taking sales jobs. It means you are uneducated yeah. or selling insurance means look, do whatever it takes for you to get paid. Do whatever it takes for you to afford, roll on, to afford to travel when yeah. the job interviews come. Do whatever it takes for you to buy that one suit that you will wear when you go to the interview. Do not look like poverty when you go there because you have just been sitting home doing nothing. So if you want it, do whatever it takes to get paid and gather the resources that you are going to need for you to hunt the actual package that you are looking for. So yeah. if you are a young person and you are in the field of marketing, journalism, do not hesitate to do sales if you have to learn to do sales. Mm -hmm. Go ahead on the field. Sometimes uh, I remember there was a time when I learned to do sales. I, I learned doing sales from the late Nikki Velka. She was a multimillionaire uh, in, in dollars, not in rent. She was a yeah. multimillionaire. She taught me how to sell. And I showed up I told her to say, I understand this is your company. I have just hired myself as a sales consultant. So now tell, show me, how can I sell this thing? Teach me how to sell it. I will go and sell it. She taught me how to sell and mm -hmm. I went and, and sold and I outsold everyone that was in the office when I came back. I outsold everyone. I took my commission. I had money because I was not getting anything in journalism at the time, yeah. but I still had money. And I used that money to buy nice suits to take care of myself. When I went to the next interview, I could show up dressed the part. I could show up looking good as expected. And I could negotiate well, even when it comes to the salary package, not from desperation. Because if you are negotiating for your salary package, but you cannot afford to walk away from the negotiations, sure. then you, you are not negotiating. You are just desperate. You are only negotiating the moment when, if you don't like the package, you can just walk. Mm -hmm. If you have that option to walk, then you are negotiating. But if you cannot, you don't have that option, you will accept at the end of the day and submit to whatever it said, then you are not negotiating. 
you are desperate. And desperation is caused by shortage of opportunities. Shortage of opportunities is caused by shortage of profile in terms of where you volunteer, where you build up. And sometimes it's not the lengthiness of the experience, it's the quality of the experience. Sure, sure, sure. And, and, them, and, and, sure and, 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 and maybe, maybe right there, maybe right there, you've made a, a great point. What's the difference between the two? You, you, you've you made the length uh, as well as the quality. Uh, how do you how do you tell the two apart from each other? Okay, you you can be you can be doing ten years um, washing a car, washing the whole outside part of the car. Yeah. But as soon as you have quality experience, you can wash the car out, outside. You can wash the car inside you can do upholstery even the, the the part that is like couches or the leather seats or whatever you can even clean the sponge inside the car to mm -hmm. make it smell well mm -hmm. you can mm -hmm. even clean the engine of the car to make it perform well and perform better so in that sense you have the quality because yes. you can do many things and you are experienced in many things even if you have done that only for three months but if you've been washing the car the outside part of the car for 10 years you just know how to do that and yeah. nothing else yeah. so yeah. It's about the quality of the experience with the experience that you have what more can you do and should things change tomorrow what kind of ideas can you come up with what can you change all right we are in conversation with uh, Mondi Soko who is uh, the director uh, and founder of Guinea Media Intelligence remember if you want to fire a question uh, you can do exactly that uh, when we come back uh, Mondi I'll ask you about mistakes and maybe mull over that particular question ruminate over that and when we come back uh, we can get into that as to the mistakes that we make that makes us to not be relevant in an age and time where things need for you to quickly adjust that's the question i'm firing to you when we come back from a quick ad break you and i uh, will stay together for the next uh, 30 minutes we should take us uh, to the end of uh, our show today and i appreciate some of the questions that are coming in i'll tell you what with 30 minutes left you may begin to phrase your question and send it to us 0123829257 we have tapelo malope uh, we've sent in a question as well austin malachi your question is coming in from mres we also have Francina Marakala from Abopani who has also fired a question. Doris Mabaso, your question is with us as well. We'll ask all of those uh, to Mondi who's on the line. Mondi, before we get to this particular question, I did put a question to you before we took a break in terms of the mistakes uh, that are often committed that might be an impediment for a lack of better word to uh, relevance as it were. All right. Um, one of the questions, one of the mistakes that I have seen People, especially graduates who are job hunting, mm. they, number one, do not put enough time necessary to, to set up their CVs mm -hmm. in terms of how your CV look. Is it on the latest uh, template or in a proper latest presentation? And does it actually speaks to the employer? That is one part. And the second part of it is what sort of online presence do you have? Uh, I remember we, we had an employee that we used to fight with a lot. She used to post a lot of nude pictures of herself on Facebook and, yeah. and, and, um, and Instagram. Mm -hmm. And that was, it was problematic to me because sometimes if I'm sitting with a client and I have to bring her on to say, uh, we have so-and-so who is an expert when it comes to software development or who can set up one, two, three and one, two, three for you. And the client is just looking and be like, I man, I've seen this person before because it actually happened where a client recognized them from somewhere. And when, when she walked out of the room, the client was like, Hey, she works here. And I'm like, is there anything that I'm missing? And the client dropped the bombshell to say, uh, I think before she works on my project, she needs to go take care of what she does on Instagram. You see, so whatever that you, those are one of those things yeah. and you find yeah. out sometimes you didn't call your referees. So in terms of that's one of the mistakes that I made mm -hmm. in terms of sometimes you leave company X thinking that you left in good terms yeah. because you probably saved the notice. You have done everything properly, but only to find out that maybe that ex-boss is not willing to let you go and they bedmouth you when, when 
the potential employer's call. Yeah. So yeah. sometimes you need to have someone who's going to call them and ask for a reference just to check as to what do they really say about you. Mm -hmm. That is one of the things that uh, graduates need excuse me, to take care of. So you need to, if you are looking for a job, and you have set up your CV and you have called the referees to say, hey, comrade, please, I have worked there for this time and this time. Please, when potential employers call, please do tell them of all the good work that I have done there. Yeah. You have to remind them. Sometimes in other companies, they hire a lot of people enough for them to remember you, even who you are. So even when the potential employer calls, sometimes they don't even remember who you are because of the large number of people that they hire. So you need to call them and prepare them for the potential employers calling and yeah. also you need to call them before to test if they are giving the correct testimonial that speaks with your cv as well and mm -hmm. by the way we do not want to know on your cv as to your hobby is taking a job with sporty <laughs> we, we are not interested the first thing we look at when you open your cv is where has she worked yeah. And what does she do? When mm. we hit up your name on Google, what appears? Is it you and bottles of, of, of alcohol left, right, and center? And you are already looking at the CV and the pictures online and you are like, eh, this one, I see a lot of sick notes every Monday. Like, mm. exactly mm. what mm. do you have that mm. speak about mm. you out there? Mm. If you are an expert in finance, I would like to see videos of you on YouTube talking about finance. Sure. I would like to see, because these are some of the things that are going on. When I say to graduates, no one is coming to save you. I am not bluffing. Sure. Let's say, for instance, uh, God forbid, your parents passed away and they left you a house worth 10 million. How much inheritance tax are you going to pay for your own house that your parents left you? How much was bread 10 years ago? How much is bread today? And the salaries in terms of how they increase. Do they increase enough to cover the costs that we deal with? How much was taxi, was taxi from Mabopane Station to TUT TNG five years ago? And how much is it today? And if you are thinking that just because you are a financial manager that is going to help you alone, it won't be good enough to take care of you. You need to do multiple things. You need to learn new things. So those are some of the mistakes that I've seen. I've seen people who want to stick to one thing, what they've studied, yeah. and yeah. that becomes detrimental for the opportunities. The world in which we live today does require a different approach, does it not? Let's get to Tabo Malope now, who's asking a question here. He's saying, how did you move from radio and broadcasting space to teaching? I, I, I'm not sure if, if you mentioned anything about teaching here, but, but that's the question he's asking. Perhaps uh, to starting a company would have been the question, but he's asking, how did you move from radio broadcasting space to teaching? To teaching, I, I think that's probably someone who's following me on, on social media and yeah. YouTube. I do teach other businesses and I do host seminars from time to time where yes. I am teaching other businesses. So how that came by, I am someone, remember, who is from journalism and broadcasting. I was not taught how to read a spreadsheet. I was not taught how to be a business person. I had to learn business by making so many mistakes such that I, I've messed up too much. And that is why I always say to entrepreneurs, I'm not the smartest guy. I'm just the guy who messed up too much and mm. who can tell you what not to do because I've already messed up too much and I've learned from yeah. from the mess up that I have done. So yeah. I am only teaching because I have done too many mess, mess ups in terms of building or of the brand that I've eventually become yeah. in terms of an individual because some people don't like working with genial they like with working with monthly and others prefer working with genial not not with monthly so that is how the transition came right and another question from austin malachi from mrs who's asking here what is your biggest highlight of working at tutfm i'd like to hear the answer then <laughs> Um, oh gosh, where do I start? Um, T T T F M. I had really fun moments, but um, when I when I won that award, when I picked up that trophy, that was quite a highlight for me. Mm -hmm. I think it was handed over to me by Papa Machisikawe and Abram Jensu. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And um, yeah, I think those are the ones who are on the stage. I think in Dr. Malinga, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. uh, that was quite a highlight for me because sometimes you work hard on a daily basis yes. without realizing that what, what you're doing, it impacts people and, mm -hmm. and people love what you do. Sure. For me, sometimes, because I could be in that studio with the crew that I was with, and sometimes, you know, we could have fun in the studio, and it's quite emotional for me. And um, you, 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 I didn't think it was as big as it was. I only learned a few years later when the news reader that was reading news in our channel went to China when Jacob Ntlapo was nominated for an MTN award on that very show. That's the crew that I was with. So for me, that was quite a highlight of, sure. of my career. But among, among other things, I have embarrassing moments and funny moments as well. And that, yeah, I, I, sometimes we could do radio shows there. And when you go out of the studio, there are people waiting for you and be like, hey, why didn't you take my call? I also wanted to, you know, but it's, yeah. it's, it's yeah. one of those. Right. So, so Francina Maragalla from Mabopani, and I'm trying to push this particular question, um, says, if I volunteer and the employer is taking advantage of the fact that I'm working for free and never look for budget for me, how do I make them pay? Unfortunately, we have a lot of fights as well, me included, that we did not win. And you will not win every fight, unfortunately. Yeah. So when you start working with them, your intention is not money. Your intention is to have that signature that Mondi mm. Sogo um, worked for Matecha Signolo Pharmacy as an administrator or yeah. as one, two, three. So that when I apply to a bigger company, when I apply to Microsoft or Google, I can say I did one, two, three, and four, and they have it on paper and I have someone who can back me up for that. That gives me leverage when I now negotiate a salary to where I am going, other than having a CV that tells me your name, same name, your address, and also tell me, Hori, when are you love jogging, list Portly Bobby, and then it, 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 it just doesn't show me that we have worked anywhere. Because can I also correct this? Yeah. The in-service training that we see on people's CVs, we do not take it seriously either because we know that the institutions forced you to do that in-service training for you to graduate because the institutions want what is best for the students. So I want to see what, what is driving you to move further than what your lecturers has, has done for you. Because lecturers have this habit of becoming parents to these kids. Mm -hmm. They even look out for opportunities for them and hand over. Because some lecturers, when they are lecturing, and they see the potential on the students, they take it upon themselves to make sure that they succeed. So I want to see you, not what your lecturers has done out of you. Sure. So, so in, in terms of this particular processes, I want, I want us to track back, especially to what you've said about uh, print. You've been in that space yourself. We're seeing a uh, newspaper outlets been closed and many companies moving towards the digital landscape, if, if you like. Does it actually mean for somebody who's contemplating her future in print, does it mean they have to rethink um, their future perhaps? Yeah? No, not at all. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, I, I know my PA is listening, so I don't want to have a lot of explaining tomorrow when I get back to the office. So I, I, I will okay. not say. But sure. I will just say for people like me, I would bring back a newspaper and it would be on steroids. Mm -hmm with no doubt. Newspapers or journalism or print media is not dead because what is beating or what is causing the current newspapers to die, they are focusing on breaking news of which if Ntatemboro has done one, two, three, it doesn't make sense for me to read about him tomorrow when I've already watched the video the previous mm -hmm. night. Mm -hmm. But if you can investigate a story, for example, let me give you a story. Yeah. Let's say you were to, your leading front page story was for you explaining what right does the Rothschild family has over the Reserve Bank of, of South Africa because it's actually privately owned. 
our reserve bank is not owned by the state it's privately owned how much rights do they have and how does that affect me and what are the rating uh, agencies your moody's and whatnot what does that mean to the money that i work hard for if it's 50 rand today it could buy one two three and four and today it can only buy one and two what causes that is it because of the reserve bank is it rating agencies and these rating agencies whom did they report to if you could do a deep investigation and an analysis on that and we see the newspaper and we can tell that there is some investigation and proper work that is mm. done here mm -hmm. that influencer palace i cannot do on TikTok. That requires a professional journalist yeah. to do it. Yeah. We yeah. can buy those papers again. So it's just a question of transitioning in terms of the value to say now we are no longer breaking news. Now yeah. we are thorough investigation. Yeah. And and then we have uh this uh if you like, a a a fetish. There's this um, fashion that is creeping in of people like him to break news on social media and they use the overuse of social media um, as a source of uh, extracting and fishing out, out news. How does that either improve the quality of reporting or jeopardize it? It, it, it actually um, improves and ruins reporting. In terms of ruining reporting, I can bring in a footage of people who were protesting in Haiti and show you how the situation is bad at Northwest and tell you that these people are banning human beings at Northwest when it's a footage from somewhere in Haiti or, or, or somewhere in Jamaica. Yeah. Because for, as, as, as black brothers and sisters, we look alike and, and we dress the same and we mm. behave alike. Mm. So if I caption it based on what I like, and then it, 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 it can mislead, it can incite violence, and it may not hold the Ten Commandments of journalism, or it yeah. cannot hold the relevant values. So basically, it can mislead, it can, be, it can be dangerous, it can destroy investors' confidence in a country, it, it, it can just ruin a lot of things. But also in terms of reporting, I can report live as the story happened and go live on Facebook and show people why the action is happening. So in, and we can have different camera angles as different people are filming it. So that is the beauty of it, but it still needs to be managed. Yeah, and, and everybody is talking then before we, we take a quick break. When we come back from that, uh, Doris Maba, so your question will come in. But everybody is talking about the advent of artificial intelligence. A lot of people are uh, beginning to think about how it is going to either add value or detract from the value that we are already seeing. The fourth industrial revolution. How how is how is content creation and proper reporting going to survive the storm? that comes with uh, that advent? Uh, I can I can now sit and instruct my team to create another you with all the background of TUTFM and the banners. They would create another you um, <laughs> with your own voice uh, doing that show. And yes. it, 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 for someone who doesn't know the difference or who have never met you in person, they would really be, be they would really be like fooled about it and mm -hmm. i think we also that doll that the chinese people launched that was reading news it's a doll that was reading news it has the correct body movements like tv news readers uh, artificial intelligence is very scary can i speak on a personal perspective mm -hmm. raising my left hand artificial intelligence is very scary for those who are not scared of it are the ones who have not seen it. Mm. I can create you. I can have, I for, for example, sometimes I have artificial intelligence answering my emails. Sometimes I have artificial intelligence reminding me, running my schedule on my behalf, telling me what to do, when to do it, giving me suggestions. So artificial intelligence is yet to take people's jobs and they are and they are already gone when COVID hit and then everyone had to be retrenched people went home and some never went back to work but when you go back to those warehouses there's production being done mm -hmm. artificial intelligence has taken place so if you are someone listening to the show and you are thinking that your day of artificial intelligence will not come 
I think you are being delusional. Artificial intelligence is coming for all of us. So whatever that you do, you have to make sure that you do it in a way that it, it, it becomes in your blood and you become one of those that can't be replaced. For example, let me give you an example. Yeah. You, you, you can't replace Steve Harvey. You can create artificial intelligence, but you can't replace what he has done in the industry. Mm -hmm. So I always challenge people to say, climb to the level where you don't need to be introduced for sure. what you do. And you can only do that by learning something new every day and by doing something new every day. Given what you've just said, I need to check uh, with you whether you are just moving your lips and the IA is talking behind you. Yeah, I trust it's you. Let's take a break. When we come back, Doris Mabasu, your question is coming up. We headed straight towards the hour uh, nine and Dere Masenia will step in uh, in uh, a moment. And of course, uh, on the line as we have this conversation, it's a Wednesday, it's like a graduate. I do have uh, a TUT alumna. You can tell even by the manner in which he's expressing himself. And today we are talking how to stay relevant. His name is uh, Mondli Soko. Mondli, uh, before we run out of time, uh, try and help Doris here who has a question. I suppose you have touched on that, but uh, we need to spare a thought as well the fact that she might have been on the road may not have heard what you say and she's asking how does she stay relevant in a fast-paced world like this there's no other way except networking with the best um you have to network with the people that are leading the industry some it's i always say it's always a bad idea to be the smartest person in the room mm -hmm. so always look for people who are leading certain industries Sometimes don't don't be shy to just send an email and say, um, good morning or good evening, so and so. Can I kindly have just 15 minutes of your time? I'm a graduate in one, two, three, and one, two, three. I'm inspired by your work. Can I just have 15 minutes with you? And when look, uh, people who are succeeding are usually very kind. You find jealousy from people who are losing because they try to pull each other down. So I've seen, no, because I've started new habits as well this year. I've started hanging around with millionaires and billionaires from time to time. Yes. And when, when you are in the room, the, the conversation is always, how can we develop someone from here to do something? Or how can we develop each other to do better? So yeah. people who are winning are always open to helping out people. So when I heard of this program of helping a graduate, I knew where it came from. It came from a perspective of someone who is succeeding and who doesn't want to succeed alone, who wants to bring someone else along with. So it's going to take networking, depending on which level of your career you are at. So yeah. if you are at the very beginning, I would say send those emails to specific individuals that you uh, aspire to be like and just ask for 15 minutes. Ask them questions, direct what you want to know when you are with them. And once you've met them the first time, depending on how you go there dressed and how you articulate yourself, if you represent yourself well enough, when they have an opening, they may even call you themselves if they like you, depending on how you carry yourself. That is just how you land your foot on the door. There you go. So so you've started a new habit of hanging around with uh, millionaires and billionaires. There are two things. You could either want to learn how to be a millionaire or you could be a millionaire yourself. It's, it's a bad idea to, 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 to be the smartest person in the room. So we always, I always need to learn some new things. And every time I always come back from those meetings sick because I've just learned too much in a very short mm -hmm. space of time. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I have to make some readjustments in my life. Someone once said it's not your fault to be born poor, but it's your fault to die poor. And then my own father, Temba Sogo, I'm sure he's listening. Um, for the XX that he used to say to me when I grew up um, to say small minded people discuss people average minds discuss ideas Corey, hey, that event I zero point. that's yeah. average mindset mm -hmm. and greater minds discuss ideas sure. so in terms of how she can handle it it is just a question of of, of saying hey so and so I'm, I'm inspired by what you do can I just have 15 minutes of your time and when you get there, ask relevant questions, be dressed well, smell, smell good, talk to them. And sometimes it's just all it takes. Um, sorry, just, just 30 seconds of this. I learned this from our office building. 
So they shoot a lot of Netflix movies upstairs, right? So yeah. one day I see all these famous actors walking in and then we're in the elevator and I'm asking them, I'm like, guys, how can I get a job for me to just be a boom swinger, to just go there and all I have to do is just to hold that thing and, and get paid. And I, I was actually just kidding. I was actually like making a joke out of it. And that lady was like, if you want to do that in acting, everything according to word of mouth. Mm -hmm. Who recommends you to do one, two, three is what gets you ahead other than you doing anything. So just show up stairs and have a seat somewhere. When they want someone to do one, two, three, raise your hand. That is how you are going to get into the game. So be on those fields where you can be appointed to do one, two, three. Just be in the right places been a, a great conversation and I like the manner in which uh, you you have wrapped it there. Small-minded people uh, discuss uh, people and uh, average-minded people discuss events and uh, broad-minded people do discuss ideas. On that note, we'll wrap it there. Thank you so much, uh, Monty, for making time. Looking forward to more conversations in the future. Thank you so much. The Groundbreakers, Mondays to Thursdays, Mondays to Thursdays, 7 to 9 p.m. on TUT FM. FM.